What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's up everyone? Tired Pritch here because it's early in the morning and I've been testing the Void Gauntlet for about two days now. Uh, and you better believe we're doing a 101 weapon guide on it. Um, while I'm in the process of creating the weapon guide and going over footage and all that fun stuff, I wanted to make a quick just like uh, first impressions video just to let you guys know. Uh, what I'm finding with the Void Gauntlet, where I think it's going to fit into the metas, um, what it might be strong with, uh, and possible concerns. I frankly have a very, I have a big concern about the Void Gauntlet. I think it's actually potentially might break New World a little bit. Um, so I just kind of wanted to dive into that with you guys. Uh, while, you know, b before I, and while we're doing this, we'll, we'll throw, um, you know, just some fun testing footage in the background that I'll just play for you guys. Um. So the Void Gauntlet is an intelligence, uh, an intelligence weapon that has secondary off focus, which means that we now have two weapons that have some sort of scaling off of focus. Uh, and by design, it is very obvious um, that this is, you know, new, uh, Amazon has created this weapon as a offhand for life staff users. Um, especially in PVE content. Um, you have a, a regular auto attack system, kind of like the exact same way that you have the ice gauntlet stuff, um, except you have some cool healing off your uh, heavy attack, and you have a very, very interesting mechanic where you don't actually block when you use your block ability. You uh, get rid of health in exchange for mana, which is going to play into the kit uh, as a whole because the kit as a whole is very mana intensive. Most of the abilities cost a lot of mana, um, and it's going to be very easy for you to run out of mana. Uh, and so as a result, instead of blocking, now you get to kill yourself for mana, which is actually a really cool feature. Um, I'm going to just briefly touch on, and I'll throw the uh, infographics up for the six abilities before I kind of get into play style and where I think the Void Gauntlet's going to fit in. Again, this is not an exhaustive, like I'm telling you guys everything that I found and all that stuff, right? I'm going to make a 101 weapon guide. This is just first impressions. Um, so on the uh, left side of the tree, I believe it's called Annihilation, we have Void Blade, Oblivion, and Petrifying Scream. Void Blade, uh, you basically, you know, whip out a Void Blade like you're casted in in League of Legends, and you now have a sword, and you can just swing your sword around like a melee weapon. Uh, fun note about it, you can actually block while you have a Void Blade. So basically, while you have a Void Blade out, you can block using a Void Gauntlet. Um, and Void Blade has a lot going on with good damage and uh, this Disintegrate debuff. And Disintegrate is a new debuff that the Void Gauntlet's going to be getting where you get to do. Uh, and this is going to be something that stacks three times. Um, you can apply damage over time and it applies a rend. So it's literally both a rend and damage over time. Uh, that's going to get stacked for a maximum of a 15% rend at three stacks. Uh, Oblivion is a cool ground targeted um, that, that spawns underneath of you circle, essentially, that does two things. One, it hurts enemies. Two, it buffs your allies, giving them a 20% in power, uh, which basically means that if you set this down on your you know DPS or your mages or whatever, every single person is going to get a 20% damage buff. Which is, which is pretty stinking wild, um, especially because the tooltip says friendlies. It does not say group members, which means in a war, let's just say hypothetically, you're standing within five meters, or or you can get the five meter radius, um, which means ten meter diameter, um, around twenty of your allies in a war. You you single handedly would give twenty people a 20% in power, which is just insanely strong and wild. And I, I, I think this ability, this oblivion ability when used properly is going to be crazy good at team buffing, um, which is going to be a feature we're going to find throughout this whole thing is the void gauntlet is, uh, inherently it's not supportive with heals, um, in the same way the life staff is, it, it does have heals and it, it is helpful. 
Um, but the life staff is just by far and away the best for healing. The void gauntlet is more about buffing allies slash debuffing enemies in ways that uh, make it easier to kill enemies slash harder for enemies to kill you guys. Um, so it's and it's I, I love the design of it, frankly, and I think the the game is uh, in a place where it, it's um, looking for that void to be filled a little bit. So I'm actually really looking forward to this uh, to this weapon. Petrifying Scream is the final one, um, and this is basically a two second root that, uh, when somebody has a debuff on them, turns into a three second root. For those that aren't aware, a three second root is a really really effing long time. <laughs> like, like three seconds of being rooted sucks. So, uh, thankfully this only has a five meter distance to it. Um, so this, this does have to kind of be used up close and personal, which means, uh, it's more of a kiting tool more than anything else. Um, but yeah, so those are the three abilities on the annihilation side. Uh, and then the three abilities on the decay side, the right hand tree are orb of decay, baleful tether and essence rupture orb of decay is, is insane. It, it, it's doing so freaking much in one ability. So, uh, for those who played League of Legends, think of Ari. Um, think of Ari's Q. Well, I forget what it's called, but the orb. You, you're you going to shoot a projectile out, then the projectile is going to come back. All right, so just think of that. When the projectile shoots out, it's going to deal damage to any enemies that it goes through or, or passes through. All right. On the way back, it's going to heal any allies that it passes through. So on the way out, it's damage. On the way back, it's healing. Um, this is also something that's not a projectile. Uh, it cannot be blocked or absorbed by a maelstrom or sword and shield blocking. Um, this is when you fire out the orb. Nothing is stopping it from going out and back, essentially. Um, and something wild about it is it has a uh, passive at the end where you can detonate the orb at any point in time. And when you detonate it, uh, the orb disappears, but it does a um, you know blast of either damage if you're detonating it on the way out or a blast of healing if you're detonating it on the way back. Um, and if you're good with the orb, you can double proc it, which means, you know, on the way out, uh, the pass through damage can apply. Then you detonate so that you get the pass through damage of the regular orb. Then you get the detonation damage of the orb, both on the same target. Um, and the same thing works with healing as well. So th this ability is going to have a lot of skill into it. Uh, and a lot of gameplay mechanics, but frankly, it's just, it's just got a lot going on because on top of all that stuff, right? It's also applying the, the disintegrate debuff, right? So it's also applying a rend and a damage over time and, and, and the healing is a regen, which is a buff. And, and so there's just a lot going on with the ability. Um, but aesthetically it looks freaking awesome. Uh, Baleful Tether. This is another really cool ability. Um, you're going to fire a small little projectile, uh, and once it's attached to an enemy, um, the enemy is going to start getting weakened. You are going to start getting in power, which means, let's say, both of you are hitting each other for 100% weapon damage. Um, after five seconds, you will be hitting him for 120% weapon damage, <laughs> or, or you're going to get a 20% damage buff. I shouldn't say you're hitting him for 100. Uh, you're going to get a 20% damage buff. He's going to take a 20% damage nerf. So overall, a net like 40% difference off one ability, uh, making this extremely valuable for 1v1 scenarios. Um, and another you know concern that I have is Baleful Tether. Um, you can get tethered from multiple tether sources and you will receive a stacking weaken which means if i get hit with two baleful tethers at the same time i will suddenly get to a 40 percent weaken if i get hit with five baleful tethers at the same time i will start to receive a 100 percent weaken um I don't know if that's intended or if that's a PTR thing that's going to get removed. I hope it does get removed because, frankly, that's going to mean a lot of problems with expeditions uh, as well as bullying people in Outpost Rush, probably. <laughs> um, 
but all together, this is a super interesting ability that I actually really like. I think it's really cool, um, and it has some some fun uh, gameplay. Um, you know, it, it's gonna. I think it's gonna change expeditions a little bit. Frankly, I think it's going to really help mitigate some uh, tanking responsibilities on the sword and shield players. Um, as you know, if you can get a couple baleful tethers on a boss, right? Like then all of a sudden they're not one shotting your tank kind of thing. Um, finally, we have essence rupture fire projectile, uh, that is basically going to put a debuff on the enemy when an enemy or when a creature has the debuff on them, anyone hitting that creature is going to receive a heal based off the damage they do. This is not only applicable to you. This is applicable to a people of the other factions. All right. Let's say that you and uh, some yellow people and uh, I say you. Let's say uh, you're purple. I'm purple. Uh, and I'm doing some stuff with some yellow friends. Maybe me and Bear Dog have, have joined up. We're doing some portals or something. Um if Bear Dog, who is a Yellow Covenant player, puts Essence Rupture on a target and I am hitting that target, I will receive a healing. I will get healing based off the damage I do, which is insane. Um, this is this is going to be a crazy strong ability uh, for for group healing, especially when it comes to expedition bosses as well as uh, open world dungeon bosses and and arenas, uh, open world arenas as well. So uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see if that feature is going to continue forward the way it is um, through the PTR testing or if they want to change up Essence Rupture a little bit. But basically, you throw a projectile out. Um, if it lands on a target, anybody hitting that target is getting heals. Um, I think the only exception to this might be... Uh, might be if you're if you're you know some faction and another faction is PvP flagged. I'm not a hundred percent if it works. Uh, if other target if if the people hitting it are PvP flagged, we didn't get to test that out. Um, but yeah, th that's gonna be a, a huge you know that's gonna be a huge feature. Um, so those are all the abilities. Uh, what do I think about the Void Gauntlet state of the game kind of thing? Um, frankly, I think that. It's going to serve a really, really cool role of being a support through uh, ally buffing um, slash weakening um, enemies, right? It, it's more of that buffing, debuffing play style. It's not so much the healing as much as it is the buffing, debuffing. I should mention, by the way, that all the uh, damaging aspects of this, right, um, primarily are scaling off intelligence. Any and all healing that comes from any of these abilities or passives or whatever, um, they're all focus-based. So, uh, you know, Orb of Decay, when I shoot the projectile out and it deals damage, the damage is going to be scaling off weapon damage, which is mostly intelligence. The healing is going to scale exclusively off your focus, um, just to give you guys a heads up on that. So... Uh, it's going to serve a really cool role of being a supportive through uh, ally buffing and enemy debuffing. Not so much, um, you know, healing, essentially. We already have a life staff for that. So I think it's going to fit that really cool niche. Um, I think in PvE content, especially expeditions, um, I think the Void Gauntlet is going to be the premier offhand weapon for life staff users. I think that's what it's frankly designed for. Um, you're going to get a lot of value out of Oblivion, the 20% uh, empower to anybody standing in your goodies. Um, another aspect of it uh, through some upgrades is if you put Oblivion on you know, uh, enemies and you hit the enemies, they're going to receive Weaken. Just another way that you're going to mitigate damage for your tanks that have to deal with the damage. Um, I think Baleful Tether is going to be super helpful. I think Orb of Decay is going to be insane in literally all game modes. I think Orb of Decay is going to be um, just the premier go-to ability that like every Void Gauntlet user is using. Um, and then I think a lot of the other ones are situational. I think Void Blade is going to be really helpful for solo leveling. Um, I think it does great damage. 
and there's a lot of mechanics involved for solo leveling um, where you're going to be super tanky. Um, I, I think that Paladin builds are going to get way stronger with the uh, with the Void Gauntlet. And instead of running, you know, Life Staff, Sword, and Shield, you probably run Life Staff, Void Gauntlet with Void Blade. Um, I actually think that's going to be super strong and probably pretty fun, honestly. Um, so I, I think it's going to fit the meta pretty well uh, as the offhand for Life Staff users. Here's my concern when it comes to uh, PvP, open world, wars, outpost rush, whatever you want to call it. Um, good PvP players will focus healers to either make them blow heals so that they can then focus the you know mages or dex players, or they will just straight focus the healers until the healers are dead. In my opinion, the best way to play a healer is with a secondary weapon that can get you out of a bad situation. You need some sort of escape. Um, people have taken to Sword and Shield for being an absolute meat shield and being tanky. Um, people have taken to the Great Axe because you can gravity well enemies and then charge out to give yourself plenty of space. People have taken to the Warhammer because you can stun and then you can hit them with a clear out and then you can run away. People have taken to the uh, hatchet because the hatchet you can have defy death and you can pop berserk and you can run away faster without getting, you know, CC'd basically or staggered, I should say. Um, so people have developed, you know, ways of playing with the life staff that typically involve, hey, when I get focus, I have something that's going to get me out. Um, the void gauntlet isn't going to provide any of that. Uh, the void gauntlet has no real great peel um, outside of petrifying scream which is a three second route um when people use the void gauntlet in pvp scenarios uh and want some sort of self peel petrifying scream is really going to be your only option and and to be fair right a three second route and i say three seconds again because when you put a debuff on a target or a target has a debuff then you use petrifying scream um it's gonna it goes from two seconds to three seconds um that is that is kind of the only thing you have. You don't have a dash. You don't have a, you know, get out of jail free card with any of that stuff. So when people catch you out, I mean, you're caught out. Um, and, and especially in the gravity well meta, right? Um, you know, if you're stuck in a gravity well, it doesn't matter if you've rooted the enemies. You're still stuck in that gravity well kind of thing, you know? And gravity well lasts three seconds as well. So, you know, uh, I am a little concerned. I, I don't think the Void Gauntlet Life Staff combo is going to be super strong in PvP purely because I think it's going to be easier to kill um, the Life Staff users. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Obviously, we haven't gotten to do a ton of testing. Um, so I, I think it's going to have a strong presence in PvE. I don't think it's going to have as strong of a presence in PvP. Um, I want to touch on my biggest concern of all and why I honestly think the Void Gauntlet might break New World. Um, so currently in the real servers, not the test servers, but the real servers, uh, there is a huge problem with war lag. Um, when you do wars, it is super laggy, super jittery, a lot of problems. Um, if people freeze all over the place, uh, I, you know, ice showers give you a debuff for like five hours. Um, the biggest problem with war lag currently, or at least one of the biggest, is the Ice Gauntlet. The Ice Gauntlet is an incredible, super fun weapon that has easily the coolest animations. I freaking love the Ice Gauntlet. The problem is the animations are pretty detailed and have a lot going on. And for whatever reason, when you use Ice Shower or Ice Storm, uh, you know, or uh, Ice Pillar or... I forget what the uh, ice spikes is what I'm thinking. Um, there's a lot of animation that's supposed to happen. And there's a lot of people on screen that are supposed to be seeing it, that are dealing with it kind of stuff. And for whatever reason, a lot of the ice gauntlet uh, abilities cause war lag and cause a lot of the problems. Um, the void gauntlet is going to be the exact same system. Orb of decay has a lot going on from a visuals and mechanics perspective. Oblivion is a ground target, same as, uh, you know, uh, same as you're going to find with um, 
Ice Storm. Same as you're going to find with like Sacred Ground stuff, which in the ground target stuff is they've said has been things that are causing lag and stuff like that. Um, you know, we already have a problem with uh, the Ice Shower ability, you know, rooting like rooting you for longer than intended or you know causing super jittery glitchy stuff that scares me for what petrifying scream is going to do to wars um so basically what i'm saying is there are a lot of mechanics going on with some of these abilities like oblivion orb of decay and things that are not only going to do one thing for enemies but do a completely different thing for allies and um have cool animations like frankly i think orb of decay has a really cool animation to it um, but that concerns me because things that have really cool, big animations to them are frankly the things that are breaking wars. And you guys haven't fixed the war stuff yet with the ice gauntlet and all that's and all the war lag going on. And so I have a really big concern that if we introduce a new weapon before you guys can fix, you know, the war lag from the ice gauntlet stuff and, and all the things going on there, we're just going to add to the problems. We're just going to make it worse. Um, and it's already pretty bad. <laughs> So I, I am very concerned with um, with what the Void Gauntlet is going to mean for wars and open world, big open world PvP with lag and um, and just breaking the game a little bit. Uh, so I, I do have those concerns. I, I think um, I would love to see the war lag situation fixed before I see the Void Gauntlet into regular servers. Um, that's my personal two cents on that, but overall, I think it's going to be a super fun weapon. I think it's going to be uh, a really cool place uncontested as a great, um, group buffing weapon with, um, with some heals and whatnot, but also a, uh, a debuffing powerhouse when it comes to applying Rens and weaken, especially weaken. Um, and for those that don't know, weaken means that you hit less hard. So when you're applying weaken to an enemy, they just frankly hit you less hard. Um, and I'm actually really, really, really interested to see just from a, uh, a 1v1 perspective. And I say this because I have a 1v1 tournament I'm doing tomorrow. You should check it out. Um, but uh, I think sword and shield plus void gauntlet might be absolutely insane. I think Sword and Shield Void Gauntlet for 1v1 and maybe even 2v1 stuff is going to be absolutely nutty. I'm imagining Baleful Tether. I'm imagining Petrifying Scream. And I'm imagining um, probably Oblivion. Like, if or maybe Essence Rupture. Like, honestly, I, I like... The, the the amount of empower that you could give yourself with CC potential and on top of that, the amount of weaken that you're putting down on enemies is going to be insane. And and for like you can shield rush into a shield bash, into a petrifying scream, into an oblivion and a baleful tether, or you could do petrifying scream into the into the other stuff first. Like it, there's there's a lot that you can do where you're gonna be one tanky son of a gun and they are not gonna be hitting you very hard. Um, so this does, I'm actually very interested to see how that combo works out. Um, all right, that's enough rambling. That's my first impressions on the void gauntlet. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. I, I am going to be making a 101 weapon guide on it. Um, I'm in the process of that right now. Still, uh, going over all the footage, double checking all my work, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, so look forward to that in the future. And as always guys, I love you. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.